I dedicate this video to all the hardworking employees across the world. If you feel that you have been a victim of a partial behavior displayed by your supervisor, though it's a lengthy video, watch it till the end. Hello, you little evil being. I know why you're here. You don't like your boss. You want to get rid of him. You want to kill him, not cure him. But I'm giving you a tip to kill as well as cure him. Right, so for the first time ever since I started making these uh, shower full thoughts that come while in my head when I take a shower, I'm sharing an evil, a slightly evil thought with you guys that could help you kill your boss or cure him. Are you ready for it? Yes! Let's do it! Imagine that angry hulk that's deep inside you who's about to go smash mode at your office anytime because you're here on this video because of some kind of atrocities that are happening, some kind of a partial behavior displayed by your boss or some unethical qualities that is just not good enough. So here I am with yet another episode of Shabakul Thoughts where I'll share my thought on how to be productive in an evil manner. To begin with, uh, let me ask the Hulk inside you. Are you ready to know the secret weapon that could help you kill and cure your boss at the same time? Yes, yes, I want to rip him off with my hands. I'll narrate my short story of a journey that started from being a full-time corporate employee to being a full-time entrepreneur. Within post, I narrate that incident, you will know what that weapon is. And just in case, if you don't get it, I will still let you know what that weapon is. So it all started 14 years ago when I started my first corporate job. And I worked in corporates for 12 years before I moved in, uh, before I became a full-time entrepreneur and the uh, founder of my business, Team Legacy Fitness. So when I started off, everything was good. I graduated. It was uh, a new world for me, trying to learn things, trying to know people, getting to know people. And in the process, I came across a lot of people who, who were considered as supervisors or leaders. Fortunately, I was always lucky till the last organization. In the past, I, I worked in three organizations in total, split across 12 years. In the first company, I worked for three and a half years. Second one, I worked for four and a half years. And the last one, I worked for almost four years. Now, in the very first organization, when I started off, things were good. Uh, I was uh, hired for a junior level, but because of certain qualities that were displayed or maybe that were observed by the supervisor I never had to go and tell them what my qualities were but they identified me that I can be a good coach I can be a good communication coach so I became a good communication coach over there and I enjoyed working over there I was not mature enough to understand the word retention or being uh, stable in one organization for a longer period of time I was happy with the way I was earning money but then I thought I should earn a little more I took a step ahead and after three and a half years, I joined another company and it was an excellent company as well. Again, joined in operations, worked over there for approximately around four and a half years. But in that four and a half years time, again, I was fortunate enough to have some blessed souls in the form of leaders and managers who were able to identify my work and uh, incentivize me in the form of letting me train the new batches in the form of letting me mentor and coach the new batches. Uh, that was wonderful till I was, uh, you know, handpicked by the HR team to conduct some HR activities on the floor. And that's how the lateral movement from operations to HR happened, where uh, I was uh, involved in a lot of uh, employee engagement work. Life was beautiful till I had to quit that company and move on to the last organization before being an entrepreneur. Well, because of personal reasons, I had to quit, take a longer break, as I had to go away from the corporate lifestyle. And then I rejoined 
Well, in the beginning of the last company where I joined, the manager was super cool, exactly the way I expected. But then came apocalypse. Unfortunately, the last, the manager, the very first manager under whom I was working, he had to leave the company and go overseas. Why the term apocalypse? Because in comes apocalypse in the form of a new manager who appears super cool with the people, building an expectation that he is the perfect fit for the role and he is a people's person, is he? Let me tell you one thing guys, the best way to identify a good manager or rather uh, and a bad manager is a good manager will be as brutal as he can, right on your face, that he won't feel, uh, he won't think twice before he won't think twice whether it sounds good to you or it sounds bad to you. He'll give you a constructive feedback one-on-one -on -one by taking you aside and if you take it positively, you work towards your feedback and you become a better person. You know who's a bad manager? I'll show you exactly how the, a bad manager carries a grim's ugly smile. That's the kind of smile he'll carry, a very fake one be exceptionally great in front of you, we'll pat you like we pat our puppies and cats, but in, on the, on, in the onset, he'll go behind the scenes and ensure that he makes your life miserable if there's something within you that pinches him. Now, that happened in, that com in the last company that I worked with. So, uh, there were some apocalyptic days that we've seen when our managers, when our very first manager had to quit and there were employees who were res resigning from the organization back to back, over and over and the workload had increased to an extent that for a matter of three to four straight months, we had to extend our shifts for almost eight, nine, oh, oh, I'm sorry, for almost 10, 11 or 12 hours. At times even 14 hours. We used to work night shifts. The shift used to start at 8 p.m. and it used to end at around 5 a.m. in the morning. But uh, ironically, we used to stay back at work till 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and we used to go back home. The best part about those memories was the bond that we built along with the fellow employees. A very strong bond with the leader as well, who managed the shift well, while the manager was handling the process was unaware about the kind of efforts that the people were putting in. Now, when people put efforts, they're not doing some honorary services. They do it because they're expecting something out of it. And I'm talking about an opportunity. Now, I, there were many atrocities that happened, but I'll narrate the one that happened in the beginning where I rubbed this manager, this, we won't use the word manager. Let's be a little metaphoric. I'll switch the word from manager to maybe a word called Babji. Sounds good. It sounds good and evil. So Babji got offended because of an attitude I carried. And I have a sick attitude of not be keeping things to my heart, being constructive enough to ask, to question. I feel I have a right to and I will always do it no matter what because that means I'm building a transparency in between me and the other person. So there was uh, an incident that happened when, uh, you know, after three or four or dark day months, the ship that was, you know, literally uh, rocking in the storm stabilized with the help of the leader who was handling it and with the help of employees, which included me as well, just a few employees, a handful of them, three or four, that's it, or maybe two or three. So it stabilized and we were expecting some incentives, not in the form of money, but in the form of recognition through some kind of opportunity. What happens there is weird, super duper weird. We had some new employees who joined in, been in, who were in the system for a good five months, six months, who were trained by the leaders. Then came it, uh, then it came down to the existing people who were in the process for quite some time to train some new employees will be joining in the coming batches and that was an opportunity which made my eyes glow made my skin glow and I was like wow I'm getting it or someone who has done everything better for the company to stabilize will get it unfortunately that didn't happen 
to our surprise, you know, it is good to be gender biased because I personally love my mother, I personally love my sister, I love my wife, uh, but that doesn't mean I will, uh, you know, show a kind of favoritism between a male employee and a female employee. This so-called male Babji was always in favor of females now. I'm not sure, maybe he is a feminist who respects his mother, respects his wife, respects his sister. If you guys have uh, sensed the sarcasm in my speech, you guys are geniuses. Okay. So uh, what he basically does here is uh, he picks up someone who's been in the system for six months. I have no issues with that spe specific someone because she may have the qualities and then she's a very good friend of mine but for picking up that someone and giving her an opportunity of coaching new people who join in was a little weird for me I was like what's going wrong and this was announced in an open forum when we speak about when we hear the term open forum it's an open forum for all okay open forum let me also talk and share my views and I question on what basis or on what grounds the only answer I was expecting was a legitimate one and a valid one because I believe in facts and figures rather than delusional, psychological, Shakespearean talks. But there was the answer that I got during that open forum was let us have a conversation one on one aside, not over here. That, that's not open forum, dude. That's a closed forum where you're just announcing and you're just telling people that let's talk about it later. That's fine. Uh, I took some time out. Yeah, I was mentally disturbed because we all work hard for the next available designation. So I go, I go sit with him for a couple of hours and uh, I got what I expected. The delusional, psychological Shakespearean talks and the ironic part is the dude right in front of me thinks I'm a newbie in the system who's been uh, working for hardly a couple of years will accept it. I didn't accept it. So the entire entire discussion which lasted for two hours had no, uh, there was no outcome to it. And after that started the dark days. He tried all the possible ways to pull me down, to not give me enough opportunities, to not glorify me for the kind of work I do, to not give enough recognition. Whereas the people who didn't know my face within the company who worked from overseas knew what I was doing and they used to appreciate me. But this guy who, who sits at the distance of like hardly five yards away from me would never ever come to the desk and you know, just use those three words. Great job done. But why? Why getting personal, dude? You don't have to get personal. It's okay. I just questioned you. And if I questioned you, I'm expecting an answer. Not getting an answer, that's good. Knock it off. So yeah, things went weird, so there were some IJPs rolled out, I used to apply for IJPs but I had a habit of winning, in the past organization I always won and I was stubborn about the fact that I have to win. I never won IJPs and that made me more stubborn and it hurt my ego to an extent that how can I not clear any IJPs and get promoted. So with that thought process in my head, I didn't give up, I did apply for all the IJPs no matter what they were and eventually I secured a leadership role. So that was like a win-win situation for me and I had to quit the organization because I had some other goals. Uh, that other goal was set after the last goal that I achieved which was getting through in an IJP and leaving the organization and not leaving it just like that. So let's talk about the other goal and at the same time Let's talk about the thought process. That let's talk about the weapon that could help you kill your boss. So this is the magical weapon. In all this while, when he crea uh, created atrocities, created a negative atmosphere, made me feel like a loser, I never ever let those affect me towards my productivity or towards my goal but there was he was the reason why I was stubborn and wasted my time in that company only to get through in an IJP to show him what I was worth of it shouldn't have been done I should have quit that company long back because it was a thought process all this while yes 
the weapon I'm talking about is the thought process. All this while, as I was working in the organization, the only and only reason to survive in the organization for me was to get to the next level. From a leader, you become a manager, to a senior manager, to, uh, uh, you know, to a director or so on. The entire process takes a lot of time guys, 5, 8, 10, 12, 15 years. Are you sure you want to spend that much time and uh, you know, want to prove a point to the person who is being stubborn and who is being biased and who is being favorite towards his employees? Just use the magical thought, uh, magical weapon, the thought process. Eliminate and diminish that person, kill that person in your thoughts, the one who's, who affects you negatively. Babji affected me negatively, he doesn't exist for me anymore. If a person has a characteristic of changing his attitude after realizing what he did was wrong, then you can use the same weapon to cure him. Thought process. Show, show the world what you're worth of. Don't show one specific person what you're worth of. Have a thought process which is strong and level-headed and keeps you level-headed to achieve your goals. So just in case if Babji is watching this video, Babji, thank you very much for, for creating so many hurdles in my uh, professional life. It's because of you I became tough and strong enough and it's because of you I developed a thought process that I don't want to be a manager, I don't want to be a senior manager, I don't want to be any uh, other, be a person who holds any other designation which is of a supervisor level. I want to hire them in my company that I've established. If in case you're watching this video, I have a role for you. You can, you may feel free to apply for that role of a manager. Trust me, I have killed you in my thoughts. I have killed your attitude in my thoughts. But I'll see how well you do when you give an interview right in front of me. Team Legacy Fitness states, train, transform, inspire. Yogesh Honavarkar signs off. Now that you are done killing or curing your evil boss, you can join me in my endeavor of making as many minds mentally fit and as many bodies physically fit. We look forward to make 1000 people fit every year. To be a part of that 1000, subscribe my YouTube channel, The Lifestyle Hackers. We also have our Facebook and Instagram page, Team Legacy Fitness.